Hey guys, I just finished making that how-to video. I got this light bulb here on the battery as a load. The battery voltage. Here's the input power going in. It's, the, it's all the same. I haven't changed any of the wiring. It's 12 volts going in, 12 volts coming out. We're here. But I just want to show how these motors actually work. There's a pointer somewhere. Okay, you can see here on the scope, this is the input here, the top. And it, uh, let's see here, let's measure this. Right about there, 9.2 volts is about a, what the motor is seeing. You can see down there, it's measuring that cursor up here. So that square wave up there is the input signed into the motor. This coming down is the back spike that comes out of the motor. And then this right here is the where the magnet is actually passing the. the because the drive coils in this type of a motor turn into a generator or alternator as like after the back spike is after the transistor turns off for one set of magnets the opposite pole it, it generates power into the battery so you can see here when I bring this down to measure that voltage that's going into the battery Sixteen point eight volts down here. That's the that's where you get your current from going into the battery. This is the back spike, which really doesn't do fuck all. If this was a Bedini motor, that's all you would get: a back spike, then you're on again. Back spike, then you're on again. You don't get this in a Bedini motor. Let me explain how that works here. Let me see if I can do this. Okay, here. So here's your coil, right? Point it down. So, let's just say this is the north. When, when this is on, we're in this position right here. The motor fires on all the north holes. In this design right here. So it, it repels this this magnet and it pulls towards this one, right? So when it fires, it's pushing this one and pulling on this one at the same time. That's why it's important to have that spacing on your rotor where the coil can affect both magnets. And then it'll shut off when it's when that magnet is probably about here. It'll shut off. This magnet flies by the coil while that motor is off. But that's where it gets it where it turns into an alternator. And when you complete the other half of the motor, when you put the, the, the other circuit on the motor like this one is, this one has both sides. So you'd have another coil that is firing on all the south poles, right? So as this one turn, this coil turns into an alternator coil, this coil is firing and push like creating the work so they alternate but there's always a force on the rotor and there's always a generator alternator happening so that's how you, you get the extra long output from these motors and why they have so much torque all the time even though they're generating 
energy. See, it's lighting that light bulb. It's using 2.43 amps at 31 watts. Like, these are the best transistors. These ones in the 56s, the reason why you have to parallel them up like this is because they're not a very big transistor, but they're fast as fuck, and they give a good back spike, that's why I use them. You just gotta parallel them up to make them handle more current. But yeah. Push repel, I mean repel and attract this magnets these two are magnets as it turns off that north pole will be about here when it turns off this one's already starting to generate electricity and it's in the same direction as that back spike is the back spike is opposite that's your generator effect right here and then it turns on again does it over and over again And once you do both sides of the motor, then you have two of them doing the same thing. They work together. I just wanted to show that. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it.